Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. Well, in honor of Black History Month, I've been working a little bit on my uh, black history, specifically looking at some speeches of Martin Luther King and the way he used the Bible, not just in the speech, but used the Bible in ways that were consistent with his life and his speech. And so yesterday we talked about the I Have a Dream speech. But today, I want to go to a different speech. I want to go back to the Detroit Walk. This was a walk to freedom that was done in Detroit in 1963. Now, I think sometimes we forget how violent the time was. It, the, the, the violence was uh, really strong in racially motivated ways. And it uh, uh, could easily be violent uh, from, from a number of different angles. But it wasn't where Martin Luther King was involved. Where Dr. King was speaking, the violence was, was to be shunned. And so at Cabo Hall in Detroit in 1963, uh, after this Walk to Freedom, there was a huge audience. And in that speech, Dr. King said, there is still a voice speaking or saying to every potential Peter, put up your sword. What Dr. King was referencing was a story that's found in the New Testament. It's found, I think, uh, uh, in John 18, where Jesus is arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane. And when they come to arrest Jesus, Peter, who's with Jesus, takes out his sword, and I'm doing it with my right hand. Actually, this is Bible trivia. One of the passages that makes a lot of people think Peter was left-handed because he takes out his sword and he cuts off the right ear of one of the soldiers, uh, servants who's coming to arrest him. And that's why, by the way, he'd be left-handed. Otherwise, he'd be, if he was right-handed, he'd be cutting off the right ear of the guy coming at him instead of the left ear. But anyway, I mean, the left ear instead of the right ear. You get it. Well, the bottom line is, is Jesus told Peter, Peter, put up your sword. This wasn't a time for the violence that seems to come second nature to us at times. This was a time of a peaceful acquiescence. And King did a marvelous job of teaching the people, don't be violent. And it's not surprising, and it's certainly well-earned, that the next year King would get the Nobel Peace Prize for effectuating tremendous change in the country and ultimately the world, but effectuating that change in non-violent ways. When King accepted that award, he went to an Old Testament passage from the prophet Isaiah that spoke about every, uh, uh, spoke about the time where the lion and the lamb will lie down together. That's in Isaiah 11, verse 6. And it's the idea of natural adversaries being able to coexist peacefully. That's what the expression was for Isaiah. And, and King grabbed that because that is the peaceful reign that we should seek to have here on earth. He then uh, quoted from or referenced Micah 4.4, 4, another Old Testament prophet, when he said, and every man shall sit under his own vine and fig tree, and none shall be afraid. It'll be a time of peace. This is something that's not only important for black history, it's not only important for biblical studies, but it's important for you and me. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called sons of God passage that our pastor had in his sermon last Sunday. Um, we need to see ourselves as carrying on God's mission of making peace in this world. Think about that. It's your video thought for the day.